At the German University of Göttingen, a young engineer named Hans von Ohain began development work on a turbojet engine. A brilliant student, Hans von Ohain was only 21 years old when he first conceived the idea of a jet engine. He was a technician with an inquisitive mind. He was very good at theoretical problems, and he studied physics as well. Encouraged by his professor, the young engineer began to build a working prototype. By 1935, Hans von Ohain had developed a test engine, and on the advice of his professor, approached the aircraft manufacturer Ernst Heinkel for financial support. Heinkel was known as a patron of radical concepts, especially those which would lead to higher speeds and enable him to build the fastest aeroplane in the world. Impressed, Heinkel recognized the enormous potential of such an engine and ordered the construction of a full-scale power plant. O'Hein and his team of engineers accepted the task and set to work on what would become the HES-3 jet engine. In 1938, the Reich Air Ministry issued a specification to the German aviation industry for a single-seat turbojet fighter. Spurred on by this directive, Heinkel's team pushed ahead, designing an aircraft to be powered by O'Hein's jet engines. From the drawing boards of twin brothers Siegfried and Walter Gunther, the first practical jet-powered aircraft was to take flight. It was called the HE-178. On August the 27th, 1939, one week before the outbreak of World War II, the little Heinkel 178 took to the air. The Germans had succeeded in being first in getting a jet airborne. But the race for the first jet fighter had only just begun. The HE-178's short but glorious life was over and was destined to spend the rest of its days in a Berlin museum. But there were others in Germany who did not believe that the race for the first jet fighter was over. Quietly working on his own jet aircraft design that would become the ME-262 was a brilliant 41-year-old aeronautical engineer called Wilhelm Messerschmitt. Throughout the 30s, Messerschmitt had been a designer and manufacturer of bombers and fighters. A favorite with the Nazi hierarchy, he was a workaholic and created loyalty from all that knew him. He was very artistic. At home over the course of a weekend, he could design an aircraft part on an A4 sheet of paper, and then the drawing would be ready to be taken into the workshop right away. His designs were that good. He was a very intuitive person, but he would lose his temper a lot. On March the 30th, 1941, the Heinkel 280 had its first test flight. Triumphantly, Hans von Ohain was amongst those who reveled in this momentous occasion. Powered by his jet engines, the plane was a superb design. Capable of speeds in excess of 500 miles per hour, it was light years ahead of all its competitors. The test flight was a huge personal success for Heinkel and von Ohain. But sadly, their jet fighter was not destined to be a winner. At the core of Heinkel's problem with getting contracts for operational jet and rocket aircraft was his inability to play by the rules of the Reich Air Ministry. But on the other hand, Messerschmitt was able to play by the rules and was awarded with substantial contracts. The German jet aircraft industry was now moving forward at full speed. Research and innovation was everywhere. Designers and engineers came up with concepts that were years in advance of their time. Wind tunnel tests into swept wings and fuselage configurations enabled the German plane makers to be way ahead of the Allies. It was a mixture of calculations, calculate this and that, and comparisons, and carrying out tests until you got the feeling that this was it. And then we built it, and tried it, and measured it, and it was fine. On July the 18th, 1942, the ME-262 made its debut. But the first flight of the day was not without its problems. 
We ran into difficulties when the plane's tail would not lift up. So we ran tests and discovered that if the pilot braked gently at speed, then the tail would lift up. It worked. When the aircraft reached 120 miles per hour, the pilot touched the brakes, the nose dropped, the tail came up, and the ME-262 took to the air. The performance of the ME-262 in its test flight was incredible. On its second flight, it climbed to 11,500 feet and reached a speed of 450 miles per hour. Already, it was faster than any Allied planes in existence. Soon, German pilots would be flying at speeds that others could only have dreamt of. But would the ME-262 be the answer to Hitler's dreams? The ME-262's jet engines could now thrust it at speeds of over 550 miles per hour. It could simply outfly anything in the sky. Armed with four 30mm cannons, each was capable of delivering over 80 explosive shells into the enemy. Future plans were also to include 24 wing-slung air-to-air rockets. Nicknamed the Swallow, this awesome machine heralded the dawning of a new age of battle. And for Hitler's Luftwaffe, it was hoped that when it finally met the Allied forces, its hell would be unleashed.